-hmm. They're free newspaper. You might see them when you go to the hospital. You might see them when you go to the market. It's called the Monitor. And I picked one up. It's called Downtown Monitor. You ever notice this? If you want to know what's going on in Detroit or around in our area, you get one of those monitors to show you what's going on. When I looked in here, uh, this lady named Adele Harper, she put this article in the monitor. Uh, I'll just jump down to some other things. They said, um, this year's digital concert will be held on Saturday, March 6th. We'll feature the incredible uh, Winton Marsalis. Tickets are on sale now at the DSO box office. But what, what the black history is about, retired Judge Leona Lloyd, picture, this is her picture. Uh, Leona Lloyd will pro pro promote her new book entitled Your Honor, Your Honor. It's a true story and a unique story that is most certainly a part of the Black History Month landscape. There are not many judicial systems across the country who can boast twin sisters serving on the bench. Retired Judge Leona Lloyd tells the story of the unexpected loss of her identical twin sister in 2001, making history because they were both sitting judges in Detroit's 36th District Court. Their unique accomplishments attracted the attention of local Detroiters. Both prominent CAS Technical High School graduates, they attended law school, then opened the Lloyd and Lloyd Law Firm, campaigning as Twins for Justice. They made national history as they became America's first identical twin district court judges to sit on the same bench at the same time. I wrote this book especially for young people to believe in themselves and their dreams, and to understand that education and a strong work ethic are the formula for success, says Judge Lloyd, a popular commencement speaker. I also want to show my life as an example that when life delivers tragedies and you think you can't go on, you can rely on faith and loving people to heal recover and continue making a positive contribution to the world. Your honor, your honor, highlights examples of people whose lives were transformed by drug treatment court and Project Fresh Start to help prostitutes recover from addiction, both originated as a result of Twins for Justice. Lloyd ultimately returned to Detroit's 36th district court where she continued the legacy that she and her sister started to give back to the community as she led the creation and implementation of Michigan's second veterans treatment court. The book Your Honor, Your Honor is available on Amazon in hardcover, paperback, and ebook format. Not here. Write that down. Your honor, your honor. We want to get that book. And we want to put it in our library. If, whether it be ebook or however. Your honor, your honor, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, make sure I get that information because our kids need to see that. Yes. Would you all agree that our kids need to see that? Yeah, Two yeah, twin yeah. sisters. Yes. We get so many different examples of, and let's all stand if we get rid of the We get so many examples of, of bad examples. We need some good examples. <coughs> Amen. Yes. Your honor, your honor. Uh, page 457, lift every voice and sing. Stand voice. Page 457. Page 457. Everybody please stand as we go to sing. The fellow, the young men, y'all gonna be downstairs in the while, okay? And then um Perion is gonna be your helper. Can you make Perion your helper? Sure can. Amen. Verse number three. Verse number three. Lift every voice and sing. Just to Kate is in your court. If, does everyone have page uh, 457? Say amen. 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 God of our
as you figure, uh, Perry, he's 10 years old. In five years, look, he's 15 years old, and, and he is making man decisions, and we've got to go in and put them. I mean, Jalen, JJ's six years old, and, and I mean, they're our church up to today. So I'm glad that we made the effort to go down and to invest the time. Tony, uh, thank you, man. No problem. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. Um, Khalid, thank you. Jasmine, thank you. And look, they got four kids, and they, they every day they brought them down here with them, and they were downstairs, and they were just as patient. Jalen, thank you. He was a ringleader. Jeremiah, thank you. Solomon, thank you. And Genesis, thank you. So we thank God for you all. Um, Reverend Crawford, he scrolled in and saw saw that we was working and we didn't invite him, so he was mad. Nah, I wasn't mad. I don't care. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> but we thank God that we were able to do so. Um, and these are the this is the direction we're headed as a church. Um, the days of just coming here and everybody getting their praise. And we, look, we're going to be about work here. Amen. That's what we need to be. Um, this church has been in this neighborhood for over 100 plus years. And look, the word of God will go forth out of here. So we thank God for all of you. Reverend Crawford, I don't want to forget you because um, you do more than enough down here. So I thank God for you also. And then Sister Crenity, you are a, a faithful contributor. Sister Kay, you done brought the whole crew. You brought a basketball team. Y'all got a four. Look, we can run full court in a while. Yeah. I just want to be on the team that's going to be with the bigger kids so <laughs> I don't lose. So we thank God for you. We love you. Sick and shut in. Please remember all of our sick and shut in. I talked to Reverend Walton again. I talked to Reverend um, McKinney on Thursday, on Friday. I talked to him on Friday. Um, his wife is out of the hospital. So glory be to God. So that is a good thing. She's at home now. She's resting and she's good to go. Um, and then the rest of our sick and shut in, Sister Thomas, she's okay. Um, Reverend Walton, I told you I'm going to be going up there in a couple, in the next, probably next week. So um, I'm trying to collect anything that you have. Um, my goal is to go start seeing them on a regular basis. Sister Governor has, uh, has uh, relaxed the restrictions that we have. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? We already took our offer now. We already blessed our offer. Go ahead, Tony. Do we have a meeting now at the church? Yeah, we're going to have a, a staff. We, well, we're going to have a church meeting. Um, if I say staff, everybody's pretty much on staff already. So um, we're going to have a church meeting. I have the notes and everything that we're going to go over. Um, and and we need to have a church meeting. I told you we're going to have one every quarter. And we're going into March. That's the second quarter, right? Second quarter. So, yeah, we're going to have a church meeting. Because there's some things that are changing, some things that we need to do to make sure that we are are following the leadership of this church. Amen. Amen. So that's all I have. Um, who's singing? Oh no, you're gonna sing for your grandbaby. Amen. Amen. So Sister Kay is going to bless us. But have y'all heard your grandmother? Say she sing when she be cooking. She ever made the biscuit gravy for y'all? Y'all ain't had the biscuit gravy. Biscuit gravy, Monique, the biscuit gravy, the gravy, whatever it was, it was something, I don't know what it was, all I know is I put it on everything, everything on my plate, I put it on, I put it on, the, I put the gravy on the meat, I put it on the corn, everything I, on the dressing, it was delicious, I put it on everything, and then I put a little bit of red hot on there, it was delicious, Amen. We're going to be blessed with a song. And then, um, you know what? We can, y'all going to hear your grandmother sing, and then I'm going to dismiss y'all to Children Church. With Tony. With Tony, right. And then Perion, you're going to be the helper, right? Did you look out for him, Khalid? The kids. Yeah. Did you go to the store to look out for them? Yeah. You get them some stuff that they're not allowed to eat at home, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> a whole bunch of sugar. A whole bunch of sugar. There you go. Do they run? Oh, we gonna get him. If she bring you back here again, we gonna have you singing. Don't be afraid. Hey, Amen. I got one. So we're gonna dismiss after um, after she sings. I may not be the best at anything, no
I stand an imperfect man. And Lord, I pray you use me in a perfect way as only you can. Uh, take my mind and think with it. Take my mouth and speak with it to the end that we will be strengthened and encouraged for this journey. Ultimately knowing that all that is done today is for our good. And Lord, that you should receive all of the glory. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, and make me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. For it's in your son's name. My Christ, our Christ, the Christ, and all of God's Jesus, and all of God's children, all together, said amen. amen. As you would stand and repeat after me. All scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable. And is profitable. For doctrine. For doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. For correction. For instruction. For instruction. In righteousness. In righteousness. That the man of God. That the man of God may be perfect. May be perfect. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Unto all good works. Unto all good works. And if I might, I would like to just call to your attention one verse from our text, and that is verse number 11. Verse number 11 from Genesis chapter 37. And there you will find these words. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. To all of my co to my co laborer uh, Reverend Crawford, all of God's children. Uh, good morning. morning. Everybody all right this morning? Yes, sir. Yeah. Everybody good? Yes, sir. Now, I want to make sure I explain this. We could have kept the kids up here, but I've been in their shoes before, and they learn better in an environment. Now, don't get me wrong, because I can teach kids. I've taught them before. I can preach to kids, too. And don't think that I'm going to be up here every Sunday. I'm going to be down there at least every now and then down there with them, teaching them also. Amen? Yes, sir. But, uh, you know, I want to make sure that we understand this, this is a well-planned a well process that they're downstairs. Amen? Yes. And, um, and, and what it does is it puts me on a time frame also. So I'm not up here all day. And um, they're down there doing things that kids do in worship. And Sister Credit, they used to have children's church here, didn't they? A while back. Yes. And, and how many of us went to children's church as young, young kids? So it's a blessing um, that we're able to provide this service to parents because look, parents come to church and while they're sitting there wrestling and arguing with their kids, they're missing the lesson. So it's better to get them downstairs where, because look, when I do go down there with the kids, I'm gonna have to take somebody down there with me because I'm not the same patient person with kids as I was before. I had my grandkid, I had, um, I had um, you know, Penelope, but Penelope wasn't a handful because we just had to look at her and she would go sit down. But uh, my grandson, uh, Parker, and his sister, Harper, I had them one day where I was, I was at their house with them. And I was like, I gotta leave. Because <laughs> them kids did not listen. They didn't obey their parents, amen? amen. And that's something we gotta teach our children how to obey. And not only that, but um, how, how well are you with obedience? Do you obey the orders that you're given? Do you? Um, in particular, um, well, let me put it this way. Uh, me and Sister Roby, um, our dog that, um, that we had to put down, Diesel, and I will tell this to anybody, um, Diesel was the most obedient dog that I've ever been around. He was. Time. Whatever you would tell Diesel, he would do it right there. Am I right, Mom? He was a good dog. He look, if you told Diesel to sit, he would sit. If you told Diesel to come here, he would come here. Whatever I taught Diesel how to give me five. <laughs> and he was like 10 years old when I taught him. I just one day I said, Diesel. Give me five, and he was like, no, and then I said, give me your paw, and he gave me his paw, and then he really he put the two together, give me five, so he would give me five. Now, Titus, the other one, he don't listen to me, but he was obedient.
to a point where if we put Diesel outside and we told him no, or Diesel never ran off. We, look, if we didn't have a fence at our house, Diesel could have been in the yard. Am I right, Mo? He would have been right there in the yard, and he just was a good, obedient dog. Made me proud. Do you make God proud? Are you obedient to God? I mean, I got to give it in terms of an animal because, you know, we, we, we fail to realize how important God, because look, Diesel, we were his masters. And we were his providers. And he knew that. And I'm sure that's part of the reason why he was like, look, I'm going to listen because um, at least once a day they're going to bring me a big bowl of food and I'm going to get to eat. And then, I'm, and then they pet my belly and they go, well, there are, there's a reward for being obedient. How obedient are you? I mean, let's go even further. I, I mean, I got we're having a church meeting today, and, and I'm going to talk about some stuff, and, and I've talked about some things, and, and I've asked people to do some stuff, and they still haven't done it. But yet and still, they say, I'm the man of God. I'm the, I'm the Lord, the man the Lord sent to this church, and yet and still, I'm asking people to do things. I'm asking nicely, hey, can we do this? We? And, and they, they're not listening. And in my opinion, if you're not listening to me, it's saying you're not listening to God because Every time we do something for the Lord, the Lord gives us confirmation on it. Case in point, we went in and we did the room downstairs because we wanted to have for the children. Lo and behold, we got nine kids downstairs Amen. because we were obedient to God. If we had not been obedient to God, then we would be up here and the kids would be here. But because we listened, because we stepped out on faith and did it, look at how we've been blessed. So how obedient are you? Regardless of how ridiculous it might sound to you, you know, the Lord has told me some things in my life, Reverend Crawford, and, and, and people have thought I was crazy. Come on, Colleen. And he said, look, there are some things that the Lord will tell you to do, and people will think that you are crazy when you do them. But just be rest assured, the Lord is going to give you confirmation that that's exactly what you're supposed to do. And it can be completely out of order what you do. I know I've told a couple of y'all, me and my brother and our friend Ramon and our friend um, 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 Keith, we're, trying, we're, we're not trying, we're going to start a business. And there, some, there are some things, and I'm talking about order now, there are some things that are falling by the wayside because our leadership is not the leadership that it should be. And I'm going to say it, Khalid, I should be, I, I, the Lord is telling me I should be in charge. Favor of God. Amen. I should be in charge. And until I'm put in charge, we're going to continue to go through the struggles that we've got through. The other business deal I told Tony about sharing with him, the guy called me the other day saying, hey, buddy, are you still in? I mean, I just want to let you know I'm waiting on you because of favor of God. I have the favor of God. It's not about my finances. It's about what God can do for me as a man because I'm faithful to him. So the question is, is how obedient and how, how, and do you question God? No. Or do you just hear and go with it? Hear and obey. Hear and obey. Hear and obey. In our lesson today, we're going to see some challenging things for the family of Jacob. Very challenging. They're challenging because they are outside of God's natural order and the source of where they're coming from. Now, remember, we're dealing with, uh, the children of Jacob, we, uh, several weeks ago, we went in and we studied the genealogy of Esau. And now we're back to Jacob and all of his sons. We remember that Jacob had 12 boys and he had one girl. Um, his last son, um, Benjamin, um, his mother died when she gave, in, in the middle, midst of birth, she died. Jacob had a favorite wife. Remember, he had four wives. Um, they, and yeah, he had four wives. That's how we're going to say it. Amen. And of the four wives, he had a favorite wife. Yes. And of that favorite, she had two children finally in his old age. And those two boys, Joseph and Benjamin, uh, there was a favoritism that was played unto them, that was given unto them. And that favoritism has their relationship with their older brothers completely messed up. To a point where his brothers, their, their brothers hate them. And I told you how last week, look, when you go in and you play favoritism with your kids, you are damaging them for life. Amen. 
Amen. Now, I know they say that there's the oldest, and the oldest is going to be the smartest and the most independent, and da 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 da, and all this and all that, and scientific stuff. No. Look, when you're dealing with God, make sure you treat all of your children the same. But in the same respect, as an older child, you should still be willing to listen to the younger children. Amen? Well, how do I know that? Well, we learned last week where uh, Joseph had, he, was a, he had dreams. And we're going to deal with those dreams today. And when we get through them, I hope that we're able to learn. Remember, all scriptures give by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The Lord has blessed me in my life where I've had some very, very just strong men around me from a ministerial standpoint. I don't show any less value on those that are younger than me that the Lord sends to me. I don't, I can't. Because the Lord can take someone young and use them in a much higher way. Look at, uh, look at um, David. You remember David was a man of war. So the Lord told David, look, now you're not going to build my house. I'm going to let your son build my house. Yeah. And he was considered one of the wisest men of all time. Amen. Amen. So that's, and verse, we're going to start off with verse number six. And it says, and he said unto them, hear ye, hear, I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. Let's go back to verse number uh, four first. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more, more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren and they hated him yet the more. So Joseph, and you remember it was tied to him being a pest, pestilent. He was, he was that's what he was. Any of us got younger siblings? <laughs> I was on Instagram this morning, and I have a younger sister. Her name is Janetta. And when I say Janetta has taken the steps that we have shown her and knocked it out of the box, of my four siblings, she's the only one of us that has a master's degree. She's 10 years younger than me. And even at 42 years old, Tony, she's a assistant dean or a dean of a college. And my older siblings still refuse to listen to her. <laughs> look, I listen to her. Every, look, every time, every, look, because she has connections that I don't have to lead. Amen. And in the same respect, when we look at, we look at um, Joseph, man, if his brothers would have really figured this thing out, because remember, I mean, hopefully you've all heard the story before, and I'm going to preach all the way through it. But remember, they sold him into slavery. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when they sold him into slavery, they took the most valuable thing that they had in their household, which was the dreamer, the one that received and could interpret dreams and give, hit it to a T. They got rid of it and gave it to somebody else. The Lord had provided, because remember the Lord told him, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your seed where it's going to be innumerable. And they took the one thing they had in their household that was able to help them, Tony, make it through whatever it is they were going through, and they sold him into slavery. Amen. And he was, he was, he was the next to the youngest. But they sold him into slavery. Yeah. Yeah. What have you sold to someone else because you were intimidated by the gift that God had given to them, and not only that, but because they were younger than you. Mm -hmm. Man, when you look at this country, mm -hmm. we're ran by old white men. Yes. Do you know that, and, and I'll say, if you do things the same way and expect different results, that's insanity, right? Yeah. We need the young minds yes. because it is a different way of doing things. Yes. Because things change. Yes. Colleen, if I rode up in an old Ford Model T, now first of all, if I had one, then I would have some money. <laughs> but if I rode up in an old Ford Model T, <laughs> me and Sister Roe would be coming to church. Me, me. <laughs> me. And I'm 
sitting there trying to park, and you know they didn't have power steering, and, and how long would it take me to park? If you pulled up in a brand new whatever that has that automatic park where you just pull up, you push it, and it pulls up, and it parks for you, how long would it take you? Did I make the point? Did I just, did I just make the point? When you deal and you use, and I'm trying to make this point because his brothers were probably, I mean, there were 12 of them, and you go in and you look at the mothers and all of that, uh, we know at least his brothers were at least 12 to 13 to 14 years older than him. And we saw where the father put the sons of Billa and Zillah, he had them working harder than the other brothers. And because they were not the favorites, they were not privy to, and I'll tell you this, and I'll say it, they were not privy to the inner workings of the family, meaning that they probably could not manage as better as the other brothers. Because the father put them out in the field. Man, go deal with the sheep. When we look at Joseph, he got the best of everything. Because if he's hanging with the older brother, remember he was with the older brothers and he was out there and he gave an evil report of them. But yet and still he was learning how to do it from the brothers also, right? He learned it from the father. He learned it. Man, the youngest child. It's so anybody the youngest child in here? Any youngest child in here? The youngest child has an unfair advantage. I will always say this. And I tell my brother this because some of the things that my brother went through in life, Tony, I said, look, man, it would be foolish of me not to learn from your mistakes. And if I have you on my side and I make the same mistake as you, woe is me. Khalid, you shouldn't make the same mistakes that me, Tony, and Reverend Crawford made. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to go through it. Now, the ones you've made up to this point, so be it. But moving forward... You shouldn't make the same mistakes that we made. You shouldn't. From a ministerial standpoint, you shouldn't. Whatever the Lord gives you, that senior guidance, don't make the same mistakes to learn from them. And in the same respect, you are that much closer to being better. Make sure you're teaching the younger ones under you. Amen. Amen. Joseph took all of that wisdom when he left and he gave it to the Pharaoh, to the king. How crazy is that? Let's keep going. So the first point is, is there's a petition for obedience. And he told them they needed to listen about this dream. He told them, told them, well, how do I know that? Well, it's right there. He says, and he said unto them, here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. That's a petition right there, isn't it? Yeah. Is he being forceful about it? Is he being mean about it? He says, here, listen, I'm praying that you listen to me. Now they're not hearing that. What they're hearing is their little younger brother, the little pest, they're trying to tell us what to do. Don't miss this. The Lord will send you people in your life and they will tell you things that you don't want to hear, but it's for your good. Yes. <laughs> man. It's for their good. It's, look, man, it's for their good. And he petitioned. He said, listen, just listen and do what I'm telling you. I'm not making it up. It's right there. He said, and he said unto them, hear. That word means to listen. He said, I pray you, this dream I have dreamed. And this word dream in this context, it is a prophetic dream. It has prophetic meanings behind it. And he's imploring them. Can I say this and nobody get mad? I'm trying to get us to understand that the Lord is trying to take us somewhere. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to do anything nefarious. I'm not trying to do anything misleading. And, and y'all look, y'all know I'm not trying to do anything misleading. Everything I do, I make sure I tell everybody and I say, are we on one accord? And then we say we're on one accord. Hear me, listen to the instructions and be obedient because the Lord, he gave, he gave us an example with the little boys up here. Amen. How much more confirmation do you need for 
from God before you start listening to the dreamer, the messenger, the prophetic giver of, of, of messages from God before you start doing what he's telling you to do. Your personal life, God has put people in your life. And all he's expecting you to do, because you keep saying, Lord, I can't hear, I don't know, I don't know, Lord, I don't hear you, Lord. And the Lord has somebody right there in your ear telling you what you need to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I look, I, I called my buddy uh, uh, Ramon, I said, Ramon, I'm very troubled by our business venture because my brother, and I know, I, look, I'm not talking about tithing, I'm talking about obedience. And when you talk about obedience, that means doing everything that the Lord is telling you to do. And there's some financial aspects of my brother's life where he's not doing what he's supposed to do. Amen. But he wants to be blessed. Amen. And it's ain't about money because the Lord can be telling you to do something else. Man, can I say this? And my wife is here. Go ahead. It feels so good to have for her to have my back. Hmm. Oh, she got my back now. I've been telling y'all for the longest. I was I was laughing when I was like, they about to get Hurricane Monique. Because, you know, yeah, every job she applies for, she gets, Tony. That's just a favor of God, but that don't mean that God wants her working. Right. Amen. Because without working, let me make sure I say this, and then I'll go to the next point. Without her working, there are so many things in my life that are better. <laughs> the first one is, is that I'm not eating fast food every day. It's the truth. It, I'm just being honest with you. The second one is my finances are in a better place. Because when my wife, well, when we moved up here, I was only working. And and don't get me wrong, I have money in the bank, but when, when we were here first, look, my wife is excellent with money. And we always have money in the bank to do what we need to do. So that's another aspect where her being involved and her not working works out better for me. I think better. I think clearer. I don't have to worry about the home. I don't got to worry about the dogs. I don't got to worry about nothing. And I just believe in God's providential way, everything that we went through with our dog Diesel, because she was getting ready to start work that exact same day. So God will give you confirmation on stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen? Let's get going. So there was a petition to be obedient. A petition for obedience. Amen? Amen. Not only that, but there was a position. There's a position of obedience. There's a position for it. Uh, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of Christ, that you submit your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I may have got a word or two wrong in there. Romans. There is a position that the Lord requires of you. Let's look at verse number seven. He says, For behold, we are binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obedience to my sheep. So they were binding grain. And his sheep stood up. Or in other words, it was established. And he, theirs made obedience or they bowed down to prostrate oneself. That's what obedience means. They bowed, look. They bowed down. Yeah, you know, I've given an illustration before. I don't know if the river crossed. Were you here when I laid down flat on the ground in front of us just to show what obedience is to? And see, we have a problem with being submissive to people. But when we look at that word revere or fear in the Bible, that's where we get an understanding of what it means to fear the Lord. When you fear the Lord, you are not afraid of the Lord. You are revering and being Amen. submissive to the Lord. Amen. And when the Lord gives you people like Joseph in your lives, you should not be afraid to be, afraid to be in reverence to them because it's for your good. Amen. This very look, this very dream that he had, he didn't make this dream up. The Lord gave him the dream. And they knew the Lord gave him the dream. They remember all the promises God had given to the family. The promises God had given to Abraham. He'd given to Isaac. He'd given to Jacob. And lo and behold, now they're seeing where the Lord is giving these visions and these dreams and these directions to the 
your younger brother and they can't accept it. Are y'all getting this? Look, the Lord will send people to get you and get you together. Uh -huh. I was telling Khalid, we were talking the other day, when Reverend Crawford, when I lost my job at Coca-Cola, I didn't really feel too bad about it. <laughs> I didn't. Because the Lord had already placed a man in my life, a preacher in my life. His name was Reverend Lamario Pinkley, Reverend Mayo. And he recognized my gift. My gift was the fact that I was able to reach young people. I was ahead of the youth ministry. How that happened? Because of my gift. He said, look, XO, I know you lost your job. I'm going to get you a job working down at the church. <laughs> mm. And that was what I needed. That piece of paper, because I know I told you about that. That piece of paper that said, XO has been, because I took, when I went back to my home church, when the Lord told me to go back, I had proof that I had been doing ministry. And that's the beginning step of me getting to the ministry. The Lord will always prepare you. And there are people that he will put in your life that will speak things into existence. You just need to be obedient to it. And look, you need to learn how to be submissive in the midst of these things. So he's telling his brothers, I had a dream. <laughs> and the dream says that, and look, you know, the more I look at Joseph, because remember there's always, uh, uh, we as black people, we always make a, 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 a comparison of Joseph to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And when you go in and you look at Dr. King, Dr. King was as gifted as they come. He had his flaws on him, uh -huh. but he was as gifted as they come. If you ever get a chance to go in and listen to his speeches and his orations and so on, things that, man, you will just sit there and just be in awe even today. Like, man, oh, that's like the young girl that did the, uh, the, 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 the poem, the national poet for, for uh, Biden. Man, when I sat there and listened to her, I mean, because God has given people these gifts. And Joe had a gift. His gift was being able to interpret dreams. So he told his brother about this dream, and there was a position of obedience that his brother should have assumed because that's what the dream told him. Now, let me say this. Regardless of how you react, the Lord is still going to that prophecy that he's giving them, oh, it's going to come true. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. The prophecy that God has made is going to come true. Yeah. Tony, have I ever told you all a story about, um, about my mother at the revival of People's Baptist Church? No. This is before I was born. My mom and dad couldn't have any children. And there was a preacher, he was preaching... Um, at the church, he was doing a revival. And I don't know what the preacher's name is. I've just only heard so much from my mom. And the preacher said, I want anyone that has a desire for something. And I don't know the exact words how he said it. I want you to come up here. And he took his robe off. And he started tearing it up and giving people pieces to him. Wow. My mom and dad had had my brother and my sister, and lo and behold, they had stopped having children. I'm three years younger than my brother. My mom went up and she grabbed one. And when she went up there, she said, Lord, if you give me one, if you meet my son, husband, we can't have a son. If you give me a son, I'm going to give him to you. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Hannah. Yeah. Well. And seven months later, how come it's yours? True. Amen. And I'm saying this to say that my mom prayed about it. The preacher spoke over it and told her, and lo and behold, it came true. Everything that the Lord gave Joseph a dream about, that he told his father and his brother it happened. Everything, and see, we 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 nowadays are afraid of prophetic dreams and, and, and probably we're afraid of it. We are. Yes, we are. Most of the time because we're not right and we don't want to hear it. Because <laughs> it requires us going through some changes to get to that point and it requires us to be submissive to God. Amen. Amen. But look, God will get you to submit. You, you, know, you don't have to do it on your own. Look, you don't, gotta, look, you don't have to do it on Reverend Crawford. We don't have to do it on our own. Look, God will get 
you down on your belly crying. Look, Tony, before I started preaching, man, the Lord, look, I had, I had stomach issues. Now, how do I know that those were tied to my preaching? My grandfather had the same thing. My grandfather, uh, Reverend Eugene Bell, he had the same thing. And when he gave his life to the Lord, she told my grandmother, look, uh, look, uh, I got to preach. My grandmother said, I don't want to be married no preacher. He's like, I don't care what you want to do, but I'm telling you what I got to do because the Lord is going to take me out if I don't do it. Amen. And I had the exact same issues with my stomach, Tony. And I'm telling you, as soon as I got into the preaching, as soon as, or the direction that the Lord wanted me to go, I don't have the same pain today. Amen. It used to be so bad, Colleen, I would have to, I, if, if, if it happened in the public, I would just have to go sit somewhere and I would just ball up and be crying almost. If it happened when I was by myself at home, maybe, I would strip down and I would lay on the cold ground na naked. That was the only thing to help me. Mm -hmm. So there's a position of obedience. Oh, that's a position right there, of obedience. Not only there is a position of obedience, there is a prophetic order. Look, and his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. So the first point is, is that it was threefold, their hatred. It was threefold. Because first of all, why did they hate him? He was the favorite of the father. What's the second reason why they hated him? The dream, right? And then what's the last reason why they hated him? Because of his words. That's threefold, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the love the father had for him. Number two, because of the love, because of the uh, fact that he had dreams. And then lastly, because he told him about the dreams. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Woo! They were uh, look. They were they were messed up by the prophetic order. Because, and, and, and I don't know why they were messed up by it, because remember, Jacob had usurped his brother, hadn't he? Yeah. Did Jacob usurp Esau? Yes. Now, did he do it on his own, or was it something that the Lord put into place? Yeah. No, the Lord put that in place. Didn't, didn't his mother have a dream? Yes. And they fought in the womb. So there's a prophetic order. And see, the thing we make our mistake is, is we challenge the prophetic order. Mm. I've always told you, I'm, I'm, the middle, I'm the middle child in my family. Middle child. Now look, I have no problem being a follower of my brother, because it's my older brother. I have no problem. That's one of the very few men in my life that I will follow. I follow my pastor, I follow my brother, and then when it comes to just me following other, other men, Tony, it's hard for me because I'm sitting there and they're making mistakes and I'm like, Okay, that's how you want to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's surely issues that Job would have ran into, but the Lord put it all in perspective because his brothers hated him so much, threefold. Because of the love their father had for them, for him, because of the dreams that the Lord was giving him. And, and and let me say this, and because of the words, we all have gifts. I want to make sure we understand that. And let me say this. When you desire the greatest gift, you're going to have to make the greatest sacrifice. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I will tell you on a regular basis, I do not have to be a pastor. <laughs> Cortez, I, I will, look, I will follow another pastor with no problem. As long as it's scriptural and it's biblical, you're going to call Dr. Arrington and ask him. I have no problem being a follower. I, I'm a great follower. I learned in the military. I learned in the fire department. I'm a great follower. I'm a great follower. And the more I'm leading, the more I'm like, am I a bad leader? Tony, I feel like I'm a bad leader. Because everything I, every time I ask somebody to do something, yeah. they don't do it. But when they do do it, Colleen, Tony, look at what happens. Mm -hmm. So it must not be me, Reverend Crawford. Surely it's not me. Because the favor of God is upon me. And every time I do something the Lord told me to do, it's a multi-fold blessing for everybody. Man. And then there's confirmation from the Lord. Man. There is a prophetic order and get over the fact that it's not the way it's been before. Because the Lord put things in order the way he wants them. And age has nothing to do with it. Nothing at all, Tony. Nothing at all. 
look at our country and see. Look, Barack Obama was a great president. Amen. And he's much younger than any of the mess we got going through right now. Am I right? Amen. He wasn't perfect. But look at the state our country is in right now. And I don't look, I'm not a politician. I don't necessarily care for Joe Biden. I don't care for Donald Trump. I don't care for uh, Hillary Clinton. I don't care for none of them. Me and my wife have been talking, and my wife, I told my wife something the other day, and and and, and I'm not gonna say it here, but my wife knows what I said about who are inherently evil. Amen. So there's a prophetic order. We've got to learn to be obedient and obedient to the prophetic order. Yes. Because his brothers, I'm making, I'm not making this up. It's right there in the text. His brother he said, and lo, his brother, lo, his brethren said, shout thou, and they're questioning him. Shout thou reign. Or in other words, in particular, with this word reign, it means to be or become king or queen or to reign or to rule, rule over, to have authority over. Now, if you know the story, he had authority over them and more because he was the king's man, wasn't he? He was a second in charge. Yes. Look, the Lord can take you from a feeble beginning and put you in places you could never possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. Because just look, when the Lord gives you a gift, number one, you have to accept it. Okay? Number two, you have to vocalize it. Amen. And number three, you gotta believe it. Amen. Look, you cannot tell me I'm not a preacher. I know I can preach. And it's not arrogance. Some people would say, he's so arrogant. They say, no, look, that's why I pray every time I preach. I say, Lord, take me, an imperfect man, and use me in a perfect way as only you can. And the proof is in that every time I get up and preach, I feel like I have blessed God's people with what he has to say to them. Amen. Care if we got one person in here, I'm going to continue to preach. Amen. So, it's a prophetic order. And look, and they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Look, and he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Now remember when he speaks of eleven stars, he's speaking of the brothers. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's what he's speaking of. And they made obeisance unto him. And it's talking about the moon and the sun, and that's speaking of the parents also. Mm -hmm. Now, when the Lord tells you to say something, you got to say it. Amen. <laughs> it's probably going to get you in trouble. <laughs> or people are going to hate you for it. Monique, they're going to hate you. Look, my wife would say some things, and, and, and I would never hate my wife because everything she says is, is I need to listen to it. There, look, there are very few people the Lord will talk to through them to me. She's one of them. We was talking, look, we were talking about a debit card earlier today. I made it available, and she said, well, this is what we need to do on it. I didn't know. Did I argue with your mom? Well, good. Go okay. Look, because I trust the God in her. I know, look, why would the Lord put me with somebody that does not hear from him also? Amen. Now, she may not hear in the level in the way that I do because there's very little that she will give me as far as instruction. But when I get instruction from her, you best believe I'm going to listen to her. My old man, look, my wife had my, had my credit where it went from like a 420 to like a 7-something. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you. I'm not, look, look, the, 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 the prophet is a proper 31 woman. All right. I'm almost done. Let's keep going. I guess y'all don't want to hear that. That I have a wife that got my back. Amen. Amen. You mess with me, you find out. And he dreamed yet another dream. So he has another dream. And this dream is even more prophetic. Because this one deals with his mother, his mother and his father and his brother. See, God will continue to repeat until you react. And the reacting in, on this one is, is when the brothers sell it. Because what they've done is, is they said, Lord, we're not receiving what you're saying when they sold the brother. They were not receptive to it. Let's keep going. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? 
Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? So not only has it impacted the brothers, Erica, now it has impacted the father and the mother. Let me ask this question. Do you trust God? Amen. Do you trust God? Do you believe God? Do you hear from God? So why won't you listen? I mean, that's simple, right? You trust God. You believe God, but you won't listen to him. You trust God, you believe God, you won't listen to him. That's where obedience and obeying come into play. That, that's why there was a petition. And remember, with Job, he prayed to him. He said, brother, I pray. I pray you listen. So let me say this. If you know someone or if you know you don't listen to God, you need to pray about it. You say, Lord, teach me how to pray. Teach me how to listen to you. Man, y'all need to write that down. Lord, teach me. How to listen to you. Lord, teach me to obey you. Man, some of the biggest mistakes you've made in your life are tied to you not being obedient and obeying God. Amen. Look, I'm going to listen to God. Uh, that's just me. I'm going to listen. There's some things where the Lord has, has, through my wife, told me. When my wife told me she wanted to move out of our condo, I thought she was crazy. I was like, VCRs? Color TVs, we live in the American dream. You better come on in. <laughs> Y'all must not have seen that movie. <laughs> but I listened to her. Now her plan was different than my plan and God's plan. But lo and behold, the fact that we were both at least obedient and listening, we ended up being somewhere where our last four years of our dog's life, three years of our dog's life, Reverend Crawford, he had a yard. Man. And he took well advantage of it too because I got like 20 holes I got to fill back up. <laughs> but she was obedient. I listened. And lo and behold, look at us now. I'm almost done. So the last point is, is it's a pragmatic observation. First point is it's a petition for obedience. Second point, it's a position of obedience. Third point, it's a prophetic order. And then lastly, it's a pragmatic observation. And he told it to his father and to his brother, and his father rebuked him. Or in other words, he expressed a sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their behavior or actions. He rebuked him. Amen. Jacob rebuked Joseph. Now, let me say this. He was part of the problem. He was part of the problem, but yet still, as a parent, he had to rebuke him. So he rebuked him, he disciplined him, disciplined him, but look at what happened. The brothers envied him. But his father observed the same. In other words, he kept guard over it. He took heed to it. He gave heed to it. He at least listened to it. He didn't just say, no, nah, that's not the way we want to do it. He listened to it. So the question is, do you pragmatically observe the things that God is saying to you? And when you think of the word pragmatic, you look at all of the facts and you come up with a logical solution. That's what pragmatic is. Do you? Do you go in and look and say, okay, Lord, I hear you. I understand what you're saying. I've gathered all the facts and I'm going to do what you tell. That's what the Father did. Now, let me make this point. Look, Jacob had no choice because he had seen all the, the Lord had done for Abraham, for Isaac. And he remembered all the things God had done for him. So surely he had to listen to him. Have you learned, stand to your feet, in your life from those that God has sent before you, that you need to listen? Look, I, I have examples. I have my grandmother and my mother. And even my father, in his last years of his life, he, at least he followed the Lord. Told me, don't play with God. How funny that might have seemed it coming out of his mouth then. And that goes to show God can get you at any point in your life and get you to listen. Amen. Yes. 
at any point. Look, Tony, on his son's deathbed, on Calvary, he says, not that my will be done. Now, and that was when he was in the garden. He says, Lord, not that my will, but that your will be done. He listened to his father unto death. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to listen to God unto death? Amen. Yes. Don't be slain again. God is speaking. He's given proof. He's made his prophetic announcements. He's sent his messengers. So now it's up to us to listen. If you trust God, if you hear from God, you need to obey God. The Bible says that if you accept, believe, and confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that he has died for your sins, you shall be saved. It's that simple. It's not, it's not a look. In order to receive Jesus Christ, See, Satan would have you believe that you've got to live this and you've got to be perfect. No, that's why you have Jesus. Because you, look, if you can't figure it out that you're not perfect, that's your fault. Reverend Crawford, I know I'm not perfect. I figured that out a long time ago. Look, from reading from Paul, Paul says that that I should do, I do not. And that that I should not do, look, Paul understood. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. I know I'm a wretched. I don't do what I'm supposed to do, Tony. Amen. And that that I'm sp supposed not to do, that's what I'm doing. My Paul said it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. Through his son, Jesus Christ, my Savior. Amen. He died on Calvary for you. And he got up on the third day morning with all power. It's that power. Look, that power. Yeah. That power. Look, that power. That's my preaching power right there, Tony. He gave me all power. I can get up here and I can preach at a level that is far above my educational level. Amen. That's far above my spiritual understanding level. He gave me his spirit. I pray for it. I preach with it. I believe in it. And I know it. Amen. I'm going to get to turn it with God. I don't care what nobody said. Look, I've made some mistakes in my life. And people will hold them against me. Amen. But I am a new creature. Yes. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We invite you to come on here. We invite you to come to be uh, on your Christian. We want you to come to be baptized, first of all. You accept, believe, and confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He died for your sins. Look, you can be baptized and you can be saved. Amen. Amen. Perhaps you've fallen. Look, anybody ever fail? Yeah. I'm talking, I'm not talking about on the ground. I'm talking about in your life. Yeah. Where you fall and when you down there, Satan laughs at you. And says, <laughs> you might as well stay down here with the rest of us. Yeah. You ever fail? Yeah. And see, that's Satan's trick. He gets you down. Yeah. And he keeps you down there because you sit there so much judging yourself. I failed again. I messed up again. I keep doing it. And look, that is his tool that he has against you. Right. Right. Get up. Yeah. That's the same thing. Get up. Look, get up, dust yourself off because you got Jesus Christ. You've already accepted Jesus Christ in your life, so get up. And then lastly, we invite you to come and be a member of the Third Baptist Church. Growth is coming. If you don't see it, that's your fault. And look, we will receive everyone that the Lord has for us. And they're coming, Tony. So if you're one of those, we invite you to come. Candidate for baptism, uh, Christian experience. Uh, to restore yourself uh, to be a member of Third Baptist Church last night. We invite you to come. We invite you to come. Won't you come? Won't you come? Come up to Jesus. You may be seated. Come up to Jesus. Come up to Jesus. You may be seated. Amen? Amen. Amen. Were you fed today?
seventh day. Yes. And what did he do on the seventh day? Rest. Rest. Yes. Now you go get a mic and you tell them what you learned. You like life. <laughs> go ahead. Come on, oh, man. You done been with me before. <laughs> well, you gonna wanna look? I'm gonna come and pick him up. <laughs> He's gonna be my long bear. Come on here, man. You gonna tell everybody? Turn around and tell everybody. If you look at me, if you don't wanna look at them, look at me. What you learned? Talking about who? Go ahead and read it, Carrie. The Lord, I is my sheep. And what does that mean? The Lord will give us a whatever we need. Amen. Good job. Good job. Good job, man. Good job. I'm going to have to go buy me some gifts to get to the kids. Amen. 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 So we've heard from Children's Church. We've heard from the Word. Everybody good? Everybody all right? Were you fed today? Did you learn something today? Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for you. We th look, all of our young, young, young brothers, we thank God for you. Um, um, keep coming. Um, Y'all should want to come and hang out. In the summertime, we're going to have a basketball hoop up and all that stuff. And we're going to do TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Amen? amen. So we're going to just keep headed in the direction that we're going. We thank God for you. Um, anything else? Anything? We're going to have a brief meeting. Well, not brief. We're going to have a meeting. After service, um, it is 11.45, so hopefully it won't go that long. Um, all hearts and minds are clear. Amen. Let's stand up as we prepare to go to the altar. Call the names out you would have us pray for. Um, let's thank God for all of our young people that made it here today. Carry on. Amen. Um, call the names out. Does um, anyone need prayer for anything? Anybody need a specific prayer uh, for healing, uh, maybe a proxy of someone else? Amen. So I believe, because God has done amazing things for me, and I know he can do it for you, but you have to believe. Amen. God isn't going to overtake you. You have to submit yourself to God. There you, go. you understand? Amen. The way you think. So anybody needs prayer for anything? Mary? You said your daughter Mary? Okay, what is the prayer for healing? Okay, okay. Amen. Do you mind if I pray? I just touch your shoulder or something and you stand in front of me. So, Lord, I thank you. Ooh, thank you, thank you, thank you for, her, for her daughter, Lord. I just ask that you heal, touch her body and her children, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, the Lord has done it for me. I believe it. I believe it. In Jesus' name. Else? Call names out. Call them out. Let us pray. Father our God, Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we love you for being God all by yourself. And Lord, help us to understand what that means, that you're God <laughs> all by yourself. It means, Lord, that uh, you created this earth. You superintend. You watch over it, Lord. You see all. And you know all, Lord. And it's because of that, Lord, that we come to you, Lord. We plug into you. We plug into your power over all that we're going through right now. Lord, you know things that we will go through next week. So, Lord, we ask that you would give us the covering today to deal with that on that day, Lord. Uh, you know our families. You know our children, our daughters, our sons, our grandchildren, our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, Lord. You know how our relationships are, Lord. Lord, heal those relationships. There's no hurt that is uh, too hurtful. There's no pain that is too painful that you can't overcome, Lord, that you can't heal, Lord. So right now, Father, we pray for all that are under the sound of my voice, for all that are watching us, Lord. We pray for them right now in the name of your son, Jesus. We pray for the Third Baptist Church, Lord. Lord, give us a spirit of obedience. Give us a spirit of love. Give us a spirit, Lord, of acceptance, Lord. Because, Lord, we've got to understand, Lord, that ultimately you're in charge. 
This is not my church. This is not their church. This is your house, Lord. This is your son's body, Father. And Lord, we bring our varying gifts to this body, Lord, for the edification of the saints, Lord. So, Lord, as we come gathered here together today, Lord, we pray, Lord, that your will will be done here. Our prayer has gone forward for healing, for so much more, Lord, we ask because, Lord, you know not only the healing aspect, but, Lord, you know the financial aspect. You know the spiritual aspect. You know the family aspect. You know all of the dynamics that make each and every last one of us who we are, Father. We pray for our young boys that are here today, Lord. Lord, we hear you. <laughs> and, Lord, I see you. And I say thank you. Watch over them, Lord, and keep them safe and forever in your care, Lord. We not only pray for them, Lord, but we pray for all of our children, Lord, whether here or whatever sanctuary, whether they be at home, Lord, we pray for them, Lord. Lord, because your word says train them up, Lord. So, Lord, we pray that you will send them, Father. And, Lord, we pray you will give us the words and the spirit where we will teach them and train them, Lord. Most of all, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. He died on an old rugged Roman cross, Lord, for our sins, Lord. So, Lord, we say thank you. And, Lord, we thank you that on the third day morning he got up with all power. It is that power that we pray over this prayer right now in your son, Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And all of God's children, all together, said, Amen. 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 Uh, we're amen. going to adjourn, and then we're going to come back in in a couple minutes.